Welcome back to Masterclass number five. Paul, we're now going to talk about equipment. Now, this could be a long one. Yes, it could. Uh, we're going to be talking about the main four aspects, which are flight, uh, shaft, you've got uh, barrel, and you've got point as well, which is a very apt topic right now. So to start with, your barrel, that's, that's your key element of this. It is. Uh, it's all about, in my opinion, choosing whether you need a dart that is thin or short and fat. So if you look at someone like Phil Taylor, for instance, who seems to be the exception to every single rule, he started with a skinny barrel and then he went to the short, uh, stumpy one. But it's all about what feels more comfortable in your hand. So we talked about grip a few lessons ago. So um, for me, it's always been the longer, thinner barrel because that's what flies better for me. But um, we've said with equipment in the past that it's all about trial and error. Uh, you need to throw a lot of darts to find out what works for you, but you need to find out whether it's uh, thin or fat first, and then we can go to weight from there, because there is a, a lot of difference in weight. Weight, I'm guessing, is a tricky one, because no one throws the dart the same or anything like that. So how do you get to grip with what weight you actually need? Well, whether you're a Stephen Bunting throwing a, something like a 14 gram dart, or a Ryan Searle who's thrown over a 30, again, it's just finding what works. And in my opinion, you have to start with somewhere in the middle. Now, the median sort of weight that people use on tour is about 22 grams. Uh, I personally use 20 because I've only got little muscles. But if you start with the 22 gram based on what type of shape you want to use um, and see where the dart lands in the board, you can go up to say, well, that feels a bit light for me. And again, you can go up towards 24, 26. You won't see many players using more than 26 on tour. So you, we can pretty much shrink it down to between 18 and 26 grams. So there's an eight gram difference there. So it's, it's not as bad as say 14 for Steven and 32 for, for Ryan Searle. But um, start at 22 and then work your way up and down based on what you do in practice after that. Is color just a personal preference when it comes to a barrel? Color has got nothing to do with um, playing better. It's all aesthetics. Now, as you can see with mine, I've got black darts. That's just because I want the darts, darts to look really uh, sort of mystical and dark in the board. It, it gives an optical illusion that the dart isn't really there. So it makes some of the segments look bigger. That's why I started using the black darts something like 10, 11 years ago. But um, as if you wanted bright blue ones like Peter Wright's used or pink ones like Scott Mitchell's used or black ones, you know, it's entirely up to you. The, the beautiful thing about darts is you can tailor them to pretty much any colour you want these days, and it's a, it's a fabulous thing. From the barrel, we move on to the shaft. Again, different lengths. How do you address what length shaft that is best for your throw? In my opinion, you need to start with something very similar to this, because the, the medium stem, which is what this is, that gives you a bit more stability as, uh, when the dart flies through the air. If you look at someone like Robert Thornton, for instance, uh, he uses a shorter stem, but because he throws the dart with such precision, he's able to do so. The people with shorter stems, in my opinion, are the best dart players in the world. But the best uh, guys overall tend to use these because you get more forgiveness. It just gives it a little bit more drag in the air and uh, it's a bit more stable. So the shorter the stem is, the less stability you will have. But if it works and you need extra speed, I mean, there are so many different lengths you can get these days, whether it be short, intermediate, medium, even a little bit longer than that as well, which I think is what Luke Humphreys uses. Um, the shorter you get, the less stability, but if you can get away with them, they can be very, very deadly, but you will get more pace with a shorter stem. Then from there, the flight. Most use the standard flight. There are exceptions, Glenn Durant probably being the one that uses mm -hmm. the pair, yep. but more drag through the air, again, stability, the smaller the flight, the quicker they go through the air. Precisely. The the bigger the flight, the more stability you will get, and the bigger scorers in the world all seem to use this shape. And there are different um, variances with this particular shape, but it, it's pretty much the same. But Gary Anderson, Dave Chisnell, Michael Van Gerwen, they're all using this kind of, uh, kind of shape because it tends to group together better. Now, Someone like uh, Mark Walsh, for instance, he was the advocate for the kite shape flight, but it worked for him. He had a, a short bulbous barrel, a short stem, and a kite shape flight. He just found what worked. Uh, someone like Glenn Durant, for instance, he's very similar to Mark Walsh, actually. Uh, the barrel isn't very long. It's uh, It's got a bit of weight behind it, um, but he wants to throw them very, very fast. 
and that's why the pear shape flight works for him. But if you're just starting out, I would start on this shape and then try the other ones if you need a bit of extra speed because the smaller the flight, very much like the stem, the smaller the flight, the more speed you will get in the air. Now, a very topical one. We're going to move on to the point. Now, gone are the days of a standard, just a silver point or a gold point, and you yep. just get on with it. Obviously, you throw with a bit of groove at the top because that's where you hold it and it gives you a bit of grip, yep. but you can get grip at the bottom. Where do we stand on finding your point? It all boils down to one thing. Do you hold the point? If you do, you may need to get some grip on there. There are so many different variances out there like we just mentioned. So if you hold that point at any part of your grip, I would say maybe get a little bit of extra grooving there uh, just to give yourself some extra stability. If you don't hold that point at all, don't put any, any grip on it, in my opinion. Just leave it alone. The only other reason you could change the point from a normal silver looking point is if you want it to look fancy. There are guys who use gold points, guys who use black points, I've seen Peter Wright use rainbow points. Uh, but for me, that's it. If you hold a point, get some grip on it. If you don't, I would leave it alone. So the, the ring grip at the bottom then, is that really not necessary, do you not think? Sometimes the, the gripping at the very bottom, and I've even seen Peter Wright use a point with an arrowhead at the bottom, which was absolutely brilliant, but that will have a detrimental effect on a dartboard, which is the hot topic of the now. But I think if you want to have grip, put it there. You've got the freedom to do so. Uh, but if you don't need it, don't use it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Again, we've spoken about this, trying to find what works for you. I'm guessing the best way is to probably spend a day at a dart shop where you can test weights, lengths of stem, flights, and everything like that. It can be a very expensive trial and error if you just constantly buy stuff online, get it sent to your house and then try it and then within three or five darts, I don't like this, and you just end up throwing them away or giving them to a friend. Go to a dart shop, they're spread around the country. There are some great ones in the Northwest, some great ones in the Southeast, they're all over the shop. Go into the shop for the day, set yourself out for four to six hours, try everything you possibly can, and then get the stuff that you actually need as opposed to the stuff that you don't need.